Hey there, Jim Hart back at you here from Hawthorne Law. And today I want to talk to you about if you are a blogger or starting an online business, here are the legal considerations that you need to keep in mind when you're starting your business. Let's go with the disclaimer. <music> putting together this list and I've got nine or ten different issues that you might need to be aware of if I'm not even say you might need to be aware of that you should be aware of if you're starting an online business and you are a blogger now remember I talked to you about in the last video I'm gonna do a series of these videos whether you're a blogger a podcast or a youtuber or a, uh, whatever it is that you're doing these are the main issues that you're going to need to think about when you're starting your business from a legal perspective now when I say starting your business I mean what, what I really mean is not not you know starting your business from day one. What I mean is starting your business to the point that you actually have, you're starting to make money with your business, you determine that your idea is viable and that you are going to push forward and this is going to be a main source of income from you. Now you need to start thinking about these issues. When you're just starting a blog, you don't necessarily need to do a lot of these, but, but some of them you might want to think about just as you're getting started. So this is a good list, regardless of whether or not you're a blogger, podcast, or whatever. This is still going to be helpful to you, regardless of the niche that you're getting in with your online business. So let's jump into it. The first things first is the name. Um, when you're naming your blog or podcast or whatever it is that you're naming, you need to make sure that you're not taking anybody else's name. You need to make sure that your name is available. And you need to be thinking about the fact that two or three years from now, you may want to trademark that name at some point. And so if you're picking a name that incapable of being trademarked because somebody else has it or somebody else has already trademarked it, then that's going to be bad. So that's that's you're going to make a huge mistake if you don't check this out first. Because if you don't check this out first, then you find out later on that you're actually using somebody else's name. Well, than your SOL. So here's what you need to do. When you're just starting out, you need to check and make sure that your name is not taken on a couple places. Number one, I would just do a Google search and see if anybody else is using your name. That's a great way to start. Number two, you wanna to go to the US, US Patent and Trademark Office website and check and see if anybody else has trademarked your name. That's another thing you wanna do. I'll include a link down in the description. Number three, you want to go on social media and see if anybody else has picked your name. In the event that nobody's picked your name, that's great. You don't need to rush and file a trademark application right away, but you know that you can register the name, you can register the domain, and you can claim all those social media properties, which you're gonna to wanna to do because those things get taken pretty quickly. If somebody sees what you're doing, they may try and grab it before you do. That's number one is the naming situation. Number two, I would say disclaimers. And so this is gonna be especially important if you are giving information out or if you're selling affiliate products or things like that. There's a couple of different disclaimers that you're gonna to need to have on your website or on your podcast or on your YouTube channel or whatever. You notice at the beginning of this, I included a disclaimer. I do that with every video because I want you to know that even though I'm a lawyer, I can't give you legal advice. That's the disclaimer that I'm making to you. So a disclaimer is basically saying, you know, don't blame me if something goes wrong. You know, it, it, unless unless I'm actually your lawyer, which I'm not, you, you can't come back at me and say that I gave you bad legal advice. That's what a disclaimer is doing. The same is true of your blog. So if you post an article that tells somebody how to make the best chocolate chip cookies in the world, but they're not in fact the best chocolate chip cookies in the world, they can, can't come back to you later on and say, those cookies really suck. Can't do that. There's a couple disclaimers that you need. Number one, the legal disclaimers that are going to help to protect you in the event somebody makes a mistake following your advice. Um, another disclaimer is an affiliate disclaimer. An affiliate disclaimer is basically telling the world that you might be earning money if they click on your links. That's actually required by the FTC or the Federal Trade Commission and a link down below uh, to the requirements for the FTC um, will be in the description. Also, you may want to think about putting a DMCA notice on your website that basically says that if somebody tries to copy your website that you can um, go to their web host provider and you can ask them to take it down. Not really a disclaimer, but it's something you may want to think about including in your website. All right, the third issue we're going to talk about are online contracts. And so just because you're online doesn't mean you don't want to have contracts with your website. And there's three specific contracts that I want to encourage you to have on your website. The first is going to be a terms of service. That's going to basically tell somebody if they use your website, if they use the information on your website, that they're going to be bound by your terms of service. If they decide not to follow your terms of service, then you can't be held responsible if they mess something up basically. The second type of disclaimer you're going to, or not disclaimer, online contract you need is a privacy policy. This is really important, especially if you're going to be collecting information from people that visit your site in the form of cookies, or if you're putting little snips of code from Facebook advertising or Google advertising so you can retarget people, or if you're collecting actual 
physical email addresses from people for information, you want to make sure that you've got a privacy policy. And actually, if you don't have a privacy policy, if you're sending ads to Facebook or to Google or something like that, they will take your ads down if they find that you don't have a privacy policy. So that's another contract you need to be aware of and you need to have on your website. And I don't know why I told you I have three, I actually only have two. Anyway, let's get on to the next thing, number four. Now we're going to talk about the things that most people want to talk about when they're starting their business, and that's choosing a, choosing, choosing a corporate entity. For most people, that's going to be an LLC. And I've got lots of videos about forming LLCs on, my, on this channel. Make sure you check them out. I'll include a link to some of the best up here. So that's that's one thing you need to be aware of. When you're starting your LLC, especially if you're a single member LLC or a multi-member LLC, multi-member means more than one person. Single member means one person. You need to have an operating agreement. I'll include a link down below to an operating agreement that you can actually use to help protect your LLC. This is an internal document for your business. It is going to be used to protect you in the event that you make some sort of mistake and someone decides to sue you to keep them from piercing the corporate veil. All sorts of benefits to operating agreements. I've talked about that in previous videos. Again, I don't know how many links I can include up here, so uh, there may or may not be a link up there. Along the lines of forming your corporate entity, you want to make sure you have a bank account. And I'm not going to get deep, deep. I need some coffee. I'm not going to dig too deep into forming the corporate entity because honestly, I've done so many videos on that and I've got a whole playlist that I actually shared earlier. So check that out. But that's something you need to be aware of. Number five is FTC requirements. I already kind of touched on this a little bit. There'll be a link down below, but you need to follow the requirements from the FTC. If you don't follow the requirements from the FTC, you can get yourself in some big trouble and that's trouble that you don't want to deal with. Trust me. Uh, well, I've never actually been in that type of trouble and fingers crossed I never will be and you never will be and that'll be great. We'll all live a nice, long, happy life together. You don't want to F with the FTC because they can make your life horrible. So make sure you follow those rules. Make sure you include the appropriate affiliate disclaimers. Make sure that you, if you're going to use testimonials on your website, that you have, that they're actually valid, that they can be backed up by proof. Um, there's all sorts of things that the FTC would be looking for. And now this isn't really going to be such a big deal if you're a small channel, but if you grow and you're big, you've got you know, hundreds of thousands of people that are even millions of people that are coming to your website on a on a monthly or yearly basis, that's when the FTC might start to look at what you're doing and they want to make sure or people can make complaints actually and you want to make sure you stay off their radar by doing everything above board and that's what you need to think about. So now let's talk about offline contracts. So you're going to need offline contracts too. Offline contracts include contracts for maybe independent contractors that you may hire or or people may hire you as an independent contractor or or you may have clients um, that you're working with. You need to make sure you have good contracts in place for all those people. If you don't, you know, you're just making yourself you're making your life harder on yourself because you may, you're not going to have a legally enforceable way to force payment if you do work for somebody you don't have a contract with them. So you want to make sure you have a contract in place. Those are the different types of contracts. Also, if you're running a membership site of some sort through your blog, you want to make sure that you have a good rock solid contract in place for that membership site that explains to people exactly what they're going to be getting as a member of your website, um, how often you're going to charge them, what the fees are going to be. Um, and things like that. So you need to make sure you have all that up to date. Um, you need to make sure you have contracts for all that. And so those can be contracts that are signed online or they can be contracts that are directly through your website that somebody clicks a link or um, signs electronically, whatever. Or if somebody just purchases something and by purchasing it, they say there's a link on the invoice that says by purchasing this, you're agreeing to this the terms of um, the membership site, that's another way to do it as well. All right, another issue that, that might come up is payroll issues and employee issues. Now, I believe strongly in outsourcing all this stuff. I don't think it's wise or safe to try and do this all on your own. This is the way we used to do it in the dark ages, but now we've got the internet, we've got you know, you basically can do anything online. I use a service called Gusto. There'll be a link down below. Use them, they're awesome, they're cheap, it's not expensive, that is an affiliate link. All the links down below are affiliate links, by the way, uh, for the most part. Uh, but Gusto is great, they'll, they'll track everything for you, they'll keep track of your W4s, they'll, they'll get your I9, they'll do all, everything. You don't need to worry about it, just use them. They are great for payroll processing, and that's who I use, and I love them, and they're, they're, they're great, so gusto for payroll. And then finally, the last thing that you really need to think about is insurance and making sure you pro have proper insurance for your business. I just paid my premium for the year for my law firm. It's a million dollar umbrella policy. This is separate and apart from liability insurance, which we have to have as lawyers. Actually, I don't think we have to have it, but 
I do have it. Um, but anyway, this is general liability. If somebody comes into my office and they, you know, fall and break their leg, God forbid, and they sue my law firm for it, then I have liability insurance in place for that. So that's important. So you're going to want to make sure you have some general liability policy in place. And that's in case your business gets sued or something like that happens. Um, you want to protect yourself by having that liability coverage as well. Not all those things you need to worry about right away, but some of them you will need to worry about right away. Like I said at the very beginning, the, the choice of a name and making sure you're not stealing somebody else's name. As you get on further down the road, after you've been in business for a while, you're making some money, you're going to want to think about trademarking, copyright, those type of things, intellectual property issues, which we haven't really talked about yet. I think that there's a lot of things here that you need to think about and be aware of when you're starting your business from a legal standpoint. If you like what I'm talking about, hit the little button below, subscribe, make sure you give me a thumbs up, comment below, and ask any questions. I can't answer legal questions on YouTube comments, as I've mentioned before, but I'm happy to respond back. And if you have words of, if you think, like things I'm doing or you don't like things I'm doing, let me know. I appreciate it. I'm starting to do live Q&A sessions every Friday. If you want to get notified next time I'm doing a live Q&A, make sure you subscribe or sign up for my email list, which you can do. I actually have a really great checklist that's going to be down in the description below for the ultimate business building checklist. It's going to talk about all the things I talk about on this video and many more that you need to think about if you're just starting out with your online business. Hopefully that's helpful to you. Get out there and kick it with your business. I don't know. I need to come up with a good catchphrase. If you got a good catchphrase, let me know. I'd like to come up with something. So anyway, that's it for today. Have a good one, folks. Peace out. Bye-bye.